Good morning, good afternoon. I am Xavier Tellier, and I'm really glad to introduce you to Alignable Nets, which are a geometrical tool for elastic grid shells. Elastic grid shells are, have a really interesting structural typology because um, they have very low fabrication costs. They allow to build very lightweight, long span structures, and they require very little formwork. Usually, their geometry is constrained by the fact that we want a planar strainless configuration. And this will impose to have a constant distance between nodes such that the grid shell pattern on your surface will follow a Chebyshev lens, an object that has been quite well studied in the literature. At Urban Canopy, we use elastic grid shell to help vegetalize urban areas. And we are actually not so interested in these planar strainless configurations, but rather in having a very compact one. And this is to simplify transportation to sites such that we have as, uh, as little um, work to do on site. We can maximize prefabrication. And you see that here we have a very different geometrical constraint from regular grid shells. We want a grid shell that can be put in a bundle. Okay? And the core of this presentation will be about what shapes are possible if you design a grid shell deployable from a bundle rather than a planar state, and how can you design such an object? And finally, what are the practical differences from a design perspective? So the closest references in the literature are, um, rely on imbricated optimization loops. So they are quite a bit slow to use for uh, design purposes and quickly used to, to implement, we propose, uh, uh, I think, a simpler approach based on lineable nets, which are defined as nets of curves that can be isometrically deformed into rectilinear states. That means you can deform these curves first by twisting them, bending them. You can change the, the angle between curves, but you cannot change actual length. Uh, and doing so, we have, using this as a reference geometry, we have usually grid shells that are, uh, can be put in really nice bundles. To the question, what shapes are possible, alignable nets? Uh, well, we write the compatibility equations that relates the length between any two crossing curves on the net of curves. This compatibility equation is obtained by looking at this compact state but can be expressed directly using the length on the deployed state. Conveniently, it can be reformulated under some mathematical hypothesis in a much in a local fashion by using this partial differential equation on a surface parameterization. This equation is quite convenient because it allows to look for analytical solutions. And we see that a lot of popular primitives in, uh, uh, that are popular in architecture are actually alignable, like diagonal nets of revolution, helicoidal nets, translational nets, and Chebyshev nets, which appear as a subcase of the theory. These analytical surfaces offer the first way to design alignable nets, which is quite convenient in particular using diagonal nets of revolution. This with this, you can even get more than alignable nets by using, you can get self-shaping grid shells that will pop up in a desired shape as you open them. And this you can do by just drawing curves like geodesics on a target surface. Interestingly, if we look at uh, reference work uh, from Panetta and Al, you see that most, many of uh, the proposed models can be roughly approximated by diagonal nets of revolution. Now, if we want to access the whole breadth of alignable nets, and also to account more finely about uh, mechanics, you might use numerical form finding. And the following method was found to work remarkably well. You take uh, as input just a nerve surface, you will remesh it along diagonals, and you will optimize the mesh you get for bending, to minimize bending, closeness to a target surface, position of the boundaries, and alignability that you may ensure by constraining each phase to fulfill this very popular equation from the scissor linkages literature. 
you have one constraint per phase to account for alignability. And doing so, you have a workflow that was found to be quite uh, robust, quite intuitive. You get quite uh, usually quite low deformations from your reference target surface. Now, what are the practical differences with regular grids? Well, for regular grid shells, you actually have two partial differential equations that dictate the geometry. And that means that if you try to clad a given surface, your uh, patterning will be quite constrained. In particular, you have to use, for example, the uh, compass method. Now, for alignable grid shells, you just have one partial differential equation. That means you have more design freedom. And you can use this extra freedom to get more properties. For example, looking at this spherical dome uh, made from a Chebyshev net, minimized for, uh, for bending energy. Okay. Well, if you want to deploy it from a bundle rather than a planar state, you may relax these equations while maintaining alignability, and you're able, for example, to reduce the bending strains in your grid shell, or to locate the boundary points exactly at the boundaries to simplify detailing, or to obtain planarity of the facets. So to conclude, um, I think alignable nets are a really interesting tool to understand and model grid shells deployable from bundles. You have a differential geometry theory that allows to understand the possible shapes. You have a discrete model, quite simple, that allows for new simple numerical form finding. The pictures I showed you that are just implemented in Kangaroo 2. You just need to add a, a new goal for, uh, to account for alignability. So you don't need a special framework. And I'd like to end on uh, how we, we have used this in practice at Urban Canopy. We used to have only uh, one grid shell in our catalog with a simple symmetry of revolution. And with alignable grid shells, we were able to get variations of these shapes that are uh, able to fulfill quite different architecture, architectural constraints of different sizes. I thank you for your attention, and I will be glad to take any questions if you have any. Thank you.